In mid-June of 1944, the Battle of Normandy was in full swing, and all across the, the Normandy front, the Allies were making incursions into the German lines. Uh, on the, the left flank, the, the British and Canadians were fighting around the area of Caen, and on the right flank, the 7th Corps, under the leadership of General Joe Collins, uh, had cut across the peninsula with the, the 9th, the 79th, and the 4th Infantry Divisions and were pushing north towards the port of Cherbourg. Well, in like the third week of June 1944, the 8th Infantry Regiment on, in the 4th Infantry Division, as they were making their way to the north, came across something kind of interesting that we're going to take a look at today. On June 21st of 1944, the, as I mentioned, the 8th Infantry Regiment of the 4th Infantry Division was moving north right through these fields right here, uh, heading closer and closer to the deep water port of Cherbourg. And imagine yourself as being one of these young infantrymen and you're walking through these fields and all of a sudden you come up on this strange complex and what you don't know is that you have just walked up on a German V-1 missile launch site. The V-1 aerial torpedo, trailing a glowing exhaust from its tail, photographed over the English coast on the night of June 13th. Picked up by searchlights. Jet propelled by a tubular unit mounted above the tail, it travels at about 350 miles an hour, kept on course by a gyro compass, intercepted by a Spitfire. About 25 feet long, it has a wingspan of 16 feet. Estimated range is somewhat over 100 miles. It's more than 2,000 pounds of explosive detonates on impact or from 5 to 15 seconds after landing. Characterized by the Germans as harassing fire, the bomb's value against specific targets is limited by indeterminate control. When you study World War II and the history of the Third Reich, one thing that you'll find is that Hitler and the Nazis seemed excessively fascinated with, you know, different wonder weapons and gadgets and making things like bigger and, uh, you know, bolder to try and bring a decisive end to the war. Every new thing was going to be the one thing that was going to bring the Allies to their knees. But one of those was the V-1 flying bomb, which was like an early version of the cruise missile. And th this whole complex around here, there are concrete buildings all over the place. I'm not even going to be able to show them all, I don't think. Uh, but this was one of the launch sites for the V-1. All right, now there are several buildings around here, but we're just going to take a look at a few of them. And uh, if you look right here, looks like this one uh, maybe had uh, some young guys put a hole in the side of it with their tank or something. Uh, and I'm not exactly sure what this um, particular building was used for. The, uh, the, the V-1 flying bombs, uh, they were also called uh, doodlebugs or buzz bombs because of the, the sound that they made, uh, were jet-powered bombs. Uh, so I think there was like steam power that was used for the initial propulsion to, to get it off the ground, but then it would use jet power 
uh, to, to get it to its destination. So that requires fuel. So it's possible that this building was uh, used to house fuel. And uh, there are a few others uh, right over here that we're going to take a look at. All right, got another building here on the complex that we are going to take a look at. And uh, I, I think that this is where the final preparations for the buzz bombs were, were made before they sent them off. Uh, the first buzz bomb was sent, I think, like a, about a week after D-Day, so partially in retaliation for D-Day. And uh, this building right here would have had no metal in it in 1944 because that would mess with the magnetic compass. Uh, the, the buzz bombs also had a gyroscope in them to adjust the pitch and yaw as it was heading to its destination. Um, actually, we're going to go back here and take a look around and adjust my lighting. Um, now, the, the buzz bomb itself uh, was rigged up with 850 kilograms of something called amatol, which was an explosive that was kind of a mixture between TNT and ammonium nitrate. Uh, and speaking of explosions looks like the same guys that blasted the other building had some fun with this wall as well i don't know if they were testing or if they were just young guys you know blasting stuff but anyway yeah pretty pretty interesting uh now i'm not sure if this one ever was used but uh anyway we're gonna go out and uh, see if we can find the ramp now all right we're going to move on down their little road here and i think that this is the launch ramp that we are looking at although it's currently being used for a big wood pile but yeah i think i can see ahead that yeah this is the the launch ramp so after the v1s were prepped and ready to go uh, this is where they would be brought in order to uh, get set up on the ramp to, to launch. And I believe the ramp is just right up ahead here. All right, we're going to just kind of continue walking around this thing. And as you can see, it's kind of hard to see because everything's overgrown. But here we can get a little bit better look at the launch ramp for the V1. Now the V1 was not a, uh, a guided missile. Um, so from this position, anything that was launched from this ramp was going to be focused uh, on hitting Bristol, England. So if you happen to be watching this video and you are from Bristol, well, this thing was pointed right at you. Wow. Here's a look at the front of the launch ramp. So this is a little bit more cleared out and we can get a better idea of what this thing looked like. So yeah, this is really something else. I've never been to a site like this before. Uh, now it never became operational, uh, but had it become operational, well, these V1s would have come right up this ramp and would have been heading in that direction towards England. Well, this was just pretty dang interesting. Uh, I've always wanted to come to one of these V1 launch sites, but have never had the opportunity. Uh, super interesting. And I imagine it was really interesting for those young guys who were marching through here 
in June of 44 to come up on a site like this and to see, you know, one of these wonder weapons uh, and, and the launch sites uh, as they were heading up to uh, Cherbourg. But yeah, really glad that we came here today. Thank you.